Well, 2016 has come to an end, and it's been a crazy year. The rest of the world realized just how stupid America truly is. Everything in the world was either unbelievably racist and or unbelievably sexist. A child was eaten by an alligator because he had shit people for parents. People argued for months about who they got to pee next to. And America lost its most prized possession. But 2016 wasn't all that bad, I suppose. Somehow the Cubs finally won the World Series after like 3 billion years. The population of tigers is on the rise. This glorious channel was created, and I found Bonnie McKee. But this channel is about video games, so these are the top five games from 2016. So, number 5 is Final Fantasy XV. Honestly, I can't really say all that much about this game since I'm still in the middle of it, but I'll talk about my impressions so far. I'm going to be honest here for a second. I haven't played that many Final Fantasy games. I have played Final Fantasy VII, X, and twelve, and I've loved all of them. I've also seen the Final Fantasy VII movie Advent Children and also the new Final Fantasy XV movie, Kingsglaive. And I love both of those also. So I heard that Final Fantasy XV was a game that could be played by either first-timers or veterans of the series. I decided it would be a good idea to pick it up. I gotta say, the game has blown me away right from the start. The graphics of the game are absolutely gorgeous. The fighting mechanics are quick and responsive. And the team of characters are great. I do enjoy the mechanics, the fighting mechanics of the game as opposed to the uh, traditional turn base that Final Fantasy is usually known for. I understand that people were like upset that it wasn't the turn based one, but I think that what they did in Final Fantasy XV has actually worked out. The characters are actually my favorite part of the game. The four main characters are such good friends and each one of them is well thought out that almost everyone can relate to at least one of the characters. Personally, I can relate a lot to Prompto. Each character brings their own skill set to the table, and each one of them is proficient with different weapons. One's good with everything, one's good with giant buster swords like Cloud, one's good with spears and daggers, and the other is good with uh, swords, or sorry, guns. I really enjoyed seeing how each one of them interacts with each other during the fights as well, and it's something that I haven't seen done so well in previous games at all. Each character can help each other out in the middle of the fight. You can also have each character help you out personally with a, like uh, kind of like a super move type thing that they have. The story of Final Fantasy 15, just like every other Final Fantasy game is a little all over the place and it can be even more confusing if you haven't seen the movie Kingsglaive because there are a lot of references to the movie and there's even cutscenes thrown into the game that are right from the movie that otherwise would leave you absolutely confused and would make absolutely no sense. But overall I feel that I'm really liking the game so far and I'm having a blast with it which is why I decided to include it on my list. Unlike the other games on this list I haven't finished this one but I still feel like it deserves a spot on the list just because I'm having so much fun playing it. I don't really want to talk a lot about Inside because it was such a short game and I don't really want to give too much away. But I'll say this, I did a full review of the game for the website GameSkinny and you can find that in the comments below if you want to see all my thoughts about this game. For now I'll say this about the game though, I absolutely love this game. It was made by the same people who made Limbo, which is another must play game for anyone who hasn't had a chance to play that yet. 
The game is able to tell such an amazing story with little to no dialogue, and even in the first 10 or so minutes of the game, I already had a pretty good idea of what was going on and I could feel the same sense of terror and suspense that the main character was feeling. The game is also very pretty to look at for a game that is almost 95% black and white. The only splashes of color are in there are the character's red shirt and the blood from when you die, which is hilarious. But the black and white is in, done in such a good such a good way that it looks gorgeous. There are honestly moments in this game that my heart was racing and I was yelling at my computer screen because I was getting so into this game. If you hadn't had a chance to play it yet and are bored one afternoon, I suggest you just pick up this game. It can be beaten in about 3 or 4 hours and I promise it won't disappoint. Play of the game. Oh, Overwatch, what a love-hate relationship I have with you. In the past, I've never really gotten into competitive games all that much. Even games like Halo and Gears of War, where I played multiplayer fairly often, I never really cared about how I did. I just wanted to have fun. But something about Overwatch has actually made me care about winning or losing each match. It's not just about the skill rating, because I still care during quick play and arcade modes as well. It's just something about the game that has drawn me in, and honestly, I love the game for it. I didn't really start playing Overwatch until about halfway through Season 1, but since then, it's easily become my most played game of 2016. Overwatch has a way of taking a bunch of characters you would never think should belong in the same game, and just smashing them all in the same game and somehow making it work. From fat guys with shotguns and hooks, to skinny purple girls with sniper rifles, there's a character in this game for everyone. What I really like about this game is that people from many different skill sets can also play this game. Some people are really good at getting headshots in games and that's cool. Others like to take their time and really think things out and that's okay in this game too. It's a first person shooter game that can be played by people who usually suck at first person shooter games if that makes sense to you. This game honestly is just so much fun that it's hard to explain. In the simplest way, the game is just fun and it's a blast to play with your friends. The graphics are gorgeous, each character brings their own unique skill set like I said, so it's fun to mess around with each different character and see who you're good at, who you're not good at. I don't want to toot my own horn, but I'm actually pretty good at the game as well, which may be why I like the game so much, but who knows. Oh, and uh, you know that guy Reaper? He's the best character in the game too, by the way. You cover your face, but I know who you are. Emily Caldwin. Nothing is an accident. Everything is in motion. All of it has led you to this exact second in time. Before you strike, if you kill me, you become the assassin we claimed you were. You become one of us! Oakley Doakley, everybody. Here we're getting down to the nitty gritty. My top two choices. 
Number two is Dishonored 2. As I write this section of the video, I literally just finished the game, and I gotta say, I was blown away. This game is so much fun that much like Overwatch, it's hard to put into words. I've had such a blast over the last 10 hours for playing this game that I'm actually planning on starting my second playthrough as soon as possible. This first time I played through the game, I played as Emily, and the second time, I plan on playing as Corvo. Much like the first Dishonored game, I was immediately drawn right into the world of this game, wanting to find out as much as possible and figure out the best way to go about taking out each one of my targets. Honestly, this is the part of the game that really shines above everything else in this game. There are just so many ways to go about every single level in this game that it's honestly insane. You can go stealth, you can go swords and gun blazing, you can kill your targets, you can choose to just knock them out, sabotage what they're working on, or don't, the possibilities are endless. I'm pretty sure you could play this entire game and not kill or harm a single character. And that's what's so great about it. No matter how many times you play through this game, little things will change every time, and that's just so cool to me. Much like The Walking Dead game by Tall Tale, you can also compare with your friends about how each level turned out, what you chose to do, and stuff like that, and it's just so fun to talk about with friends. One thing I really liked about this game is that each character, Corvo and Emily, both have different sets of powers that they can use at their disposal, which also adds to the replay value. Since I played as Corvo in Dishonored 1, I chose to play as Emily this time, like I said earlier. And I liked how her powers were different than Corvo's had in the first game. It makes her feel like her own defined character rather than just a female version of Corvo. I also should add that I like the variations of environments from level to level. This game has everything from packed city streets to giant mansions that are falling apart around you, and I enjoyed exploring each different level. One of the coolest levels in this entire game is Stilton's Mansion, which is playing right now. It has got to be my favorite level hands down. Being able to travel back and forth through time in order to gather as much information as possible is cool and, un and a unique idea. If you have somehow managed to go this long and not played the first Dishonored game, I strongly suggest that you go and check it out. It's hours and hours of fun and I promise you will likely play it more than one time. Alright, does my number one choice really surprise anyone? I haven't been able to stop talking about this game since it came out. But, I'll talk about it a little bit. Gears of War series has been my favorite game series since Gears of War 2 came out, and honestly I was a little worried when Gears of War 4 was announced. I thought that this new series might not be able to live up to the high expectations of Gears games that I built up from the first three games, but I can gladly say that I was not disappointed. This game has been an absolute blast to play. The graphics are great, the new characters are interesting and funny, and it has plenty of nice ties to the original series that veterans of the series can pick up on. The part of this game that really shines for me is the story. It's so interesting and engaging that I found myself glued to the TV for hours because I wanted to know what would happen next. The story does slow down a little bit in parts here and there, but by the end of the last third of the game, Shit literally hits the fan, and all bets are off. The final mission is something out of dreams. It's so satisfying to play over and over and over again. The game has a way of making these characters feel like family to you, and even in the final scene, which is pretty sad, it, it just hits home with you. Even though you don't know these people, really, they're fake characters, but you get sad watching the final scene of the game. I'm really excited to see what the future holds for Gears of War, and I know that whatever it is, I'm sure it's going to be completely badass. 
Well, there you have it, folks. Juan Snow's top five games of 2016. I'd also like to put in a few, uh, what, what should we call them, uh, honorable mentions here. Rise of the Tomb Raider and Battlefield 1 are also two games that I played this year that were awesome games. I was switching them in and out of my top five this whole time, but I finally settled on my top five. I'd also like to give a couple awards out, just random ones. Uh, the best character of games this year goes to Reaper, obviously. Best DLC, I didn't play too much DLC this year. I really only played stuff from Fallout pretty much. So I'm going to give it to Nuka World because I had an absolute blast playing that. And it's kind of a cool, unique thing that they did, and I enjoy it. Best soundtrack, Doom. I mean, come on. That's some ball-smashing metal right there. I mean, for fuck's sake, just check this out. That is baby making music right there. It's awesome. I'd also like to say that there were a lot of games that came out in 2016 that I wanted to play and just didn't have a chance to yet. Stuff like ReCore, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, Dead Rising 4 Rocket League, and Walking Dead Season 3, which I actually just bought and I'm probably going to start playing right after I finish this video. I also am looking forward to playing the Witcher Blood and Wine DLC as well. There are a couple games in 2017 that I'm very excited for. Things like Cuphead, Ghost Recon Wildlands, I think that's what it's called, uh, Outlast 2, and obviously Ukulele. 2016 was a pretty good year for video games, and 2017 looks like it's going to be a pretty good year as well. Except for that whole Donald Trump thing. See you later. Peace out.